Hi, everybody. Hello down there. Uh, so today I'm doing something a little different. I was looking around and I thought some of the best art that I have that I love the most, I think, is the record art that I have. So today I'm going to maybe take you in, on a little tour of a record. Um, this record is very interesting because it's done by a company that does popular favorites. So on the back of the record, can we even know what date it was? I'm not even sure. But on the back of the record, it has an advertisement for popular favorites. And it says, um, I love the the words they put because they have to put words. They have to fill up the back of the record with something. And um, before, you know, kind of during the radio times, if a radio station would get this, they would need to know what words to say on the radio about these things. Radio was really big with words back then. So it says popular favorites. Design has design, the name of the company, I guess. Um, has created a series of family favorites covering everything from When the Saints Go Marching In to Beethoven's Fifth Century Symphony from Broadway's current favorites and standards to flamenco music from Spain and Italian popular music. Music is so intensely personal, so much a matter of what you yourself feel, and the rules go hang. I think that's a way of saying you don't want to have the rules because what you want is your own stuff. That the only sensible basis on which you should build your library is personal choice. And uh, if you like it, then by all means, it belongs in your record collection. Enjoy it and play it with pride. It's the truth. There's been a vast upsurge in interest in all kinds of music in America in recent years. Musicals are among the most successful of Broadway offerings. Nightclubs featuring Dixieland bands can... What year is this? Does it even say? It's... It doesn't even say what year it is. But it sounds like like early 60s, I guess. And I think it is because there's a Simon and Garfunkel record or a track on here that's pretty early sounding. Okay. And uh, so contributing to this, oh, Dixieland bands can always be count on filling the house. More people buy tickets to opera and symphony concerts each year than attend professional sports events. Whoa. Dance bands remain popular as ever. <laughs> Contributing to this upsurge has been the ready availability of quality, low-cost recordings of familiar favorites by outstanding popular Broadway, semi-classical and classical artists. Recordings such as you will find on the design label, that's this label. These rec recordings make it possible for you to build a library of your own personal favorites at a fraction of the price you'd have expected to pay even a few years ago. Design's modern studio and manufacturing plant featuring the latest equipment coupled with the company's low, low prices have made it possible to offer recording record buyers the world's finest music recorded by outstanding artists without sacrificing quality. The record you hold in your hands may to standard is standards as critical as any set in the industry consists of pure vinyl. Then it has a little blurb. These albums are offered to you with unexcelled value and quality recordings. They are the result of the combination of skilled modern engineering techniques and the very finest recording equipment. 
These albums are recorded on three-track Ampex tape recorders using RCA, Altec, and Electro Voice microphones, and as a result, produce the truest possible tonal quality. In order to give you the most outstanding reproduction of the tape from the tape to the record, the tapes mastered by West Trex Feedback Center are pressed from high quality vinyl formula under very precise manufacturing conditions. These records are recorded with RIAA characteristic frequency responses from 20 to 20,000 cycles per second. For true enjoyment and top quality, no finer records can be purchased at any price. Oh my god, the way that they talked back then. They don't talk about things this way anymore, especially not records. In fact, they don't they don't talk about records very much. It's a very uh, it's a very silent thing, isn't it? You wouldn't have someone going around. Well, maybe they would. I don't know. But it seems like it's sort of a luxury now, whereas they're talking like Everyone should have a record collection. Anyway, I have a record collection, so let me show you the cover art for this record. Okay, so this is a record that's been compiled by the vinyl company who makes popular favorites of all kinds of records. And they have on the back, oh, I forgot to show you. They have on the back a picture of a keyboard, a picture of lovers, a picture of a keyboard, a picture of lovers, a picture of a guitar, and someone's face maybe, and then a picture of My Fair Lady. My Fair Lady? Yes, My Fair Lady with uh, Audrey Hepburn. Two different Audrey Hepburns. The, um, before she was a My Fair Lady and the after she was a My Fair Lady. And then a hat, like a bowler hat on top of a keyboard. And then just a picture of two statues, I think. I'm not sure what that's from. Two like busts. Oh, Beethoven maybe. And then here we have a cello, I think. And then a couple of folks dancing. And then a trumpet player. So all these different, this strange cat, whoever that is. And then another um, keyboard, but this time with electronic lights. Oh, a Degas painting, with ballerinas, a guitar, and Looks like a cityscape, but it also looks like someone's face here, but I think it's just a cityscape. Anyway, so they're making popular records. So they go and they take all of these artists, Simon and Garfunkel, Johnny Rivers, the Critters, whoever they are, Joe Tex, Roy Orbison, Chuck Jackson, the Surfaris, Vic Dana, and April Stevens and Nino Temple, Tempo. Maybe these are all records that they actually have on their roster, but they're putting it together like in this thing called a happening. Enhanced stereo, I wonder what that means. So it's a happening. What's this all about? Like, and check out these fonts. Like, check out this tipped over A and the happenings like a stencil and all different fonts and look at the fonts for the critters and the little there's little pictures here you know there's a little eye what's that there for we're not sure and there's a a fox and there's maybe this is part of i don't know the recording look at these things that look like emojis what's going on there but there's a woman or someone April, April Stevens, it must be, and then something that looks like bubbles on an arm or something, or bubbles on a, 
I don't know what it is. <laughs> it looks like bubbles on a boob, but I'm not sure. That would be a little racy. Okay, and so, and there's a little hand here with the Johnny Rivers. Like, these are additional, I mean, this person, whoever designed this cover, you're going for something called a happening. Lee Dorsey. So they went with a whole bunch of different fonts in a whole bunch of different angles with a whole bunch of different little emoji-like pictures, all different colors. So this is their idea of a happening. And this record's pretty good. I mean, I was just listening to it. It's pretty good. My favorite record is, or song is by Chuck Jackson, which I started this video. Let's li listen to Chuck a little more. Come on and love me by Chuck Jackson. So why do I like this image? I think because it reminds me of something that goes on today. What I really like about it is that this was, maybe this was like 1968 when happenings were just starting and they wanted to attach it to something. You have to listen to some of the Simon and Garfunkel. Hold on. Okay, so this is Simon and Garfunkel, like an edgy little band later, but right now, this is Simon and Garfunkel? This is Paul Simon? Oh my gosh. I love how this makes me look like an angel. And I also love how it looks like I'm coming to you from above. Anyway, it's a great record. I would urge you to pick up some old, old records that you, know, you might overlook just so you can learn something about, I mean, look at this font. The Lee Dorsey font. Do re mi. Vic Donna, how can I say I love you? And then April Stevens and Nino Temple, Tempo, oh yeah, that's what you do to me. I've not heard of any of these songs before, I don't think. The Safaris sing something called Latin Soul. Johnny Rivers sings Hole in the Ground. I'm not sure. Anyway. How's that? Oh, wait. I have an idea. This is good. This is uh, the critters. I can tell why the kids really like this. They probably wanted this record. Go and get me the happening. It was probably in a catalog, and then it would come to the house, or you'd get it inside of the sleeve of the record, the catalog, and then you'd order your records that way. I wonder how much they were. Anyway, pretty cool. And you can see actually how it was manufactured so that this was the back of all of the records because there's a sticker. This is actually a sticker that goes on the front of the record that could be different for every record. So this is an economical thing and they probably had uh, inserts that showed you the catalogs. Isn't that interesting? So interesting. I mean, these are not huge popular hits. These are whatever they could get at the time. 
I think. I mean, Simon and Garfunkel, they had way bigger hits than uh, Loneliness. <laughs> I hope you can hear this. So great. I love that little fox. Anyway, old records. Get them out and show us. I've got a lot of them. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. And I'll talk to you very soon. Oh, and one more thing. Happy birthday to my older brother, Booth Stairs, who is just such a great brother and so wonderful and such a great father. And I hope that he is having an amazing day. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. I love you.